Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk to you guys about the urea cycle, what the urea cycle is, how it operates, what regulates the urea cycle, and then finally I'm going to talk to you guys about just how much the urea cycle can rid the body of nitrogenous waste. So to begin, uh, the urea cycle occurs primarily in uh, the hepatocytes of the liver. Now it can also occur to a minor extent in the kidney as well. So the main function of the urea cycle is to actually rid the body of nitrogenous waste, as I mentioned before. And it does so by ridding uh, the body of ammonia and ammonium in a product uh, that is less toxic, uh, such as urea. So how does this occur? So this pathway is a little complex, so we'll just start with one part of the pathway. So to begin, we'll start with the amino acid arginine. Now, what will happen is arginine will actually be acted on or processed by the enzyme arginase. Now arginase is an enzyme that is unique to the liver and again as I mentioned before to a small extent to the kidney. So this is the very important or primary obligate enzyme that is necessary for the urea cycle to occur is arginase. So arginine gets acted on by arginase to form ornithine, another amino acid. Now in doing so, what it does is it actually uh, removes part of, the, uh, part of the backbone of arginine that includes two amino groups. Um, so that actually is what produces urea. Um, urea can easily be uh, solubilized in the blood and excreted through the kidneys and out the urine. So where does the arginine actually come from? Well, this is where the cycle gets a little more complex. So as I mentioned before, the whole point of the urea cycle is to remove ammonia or ammonium. And this comes from amino acid metabolism. So whenever you have amino acid metabolism, you have ammonium production. So the ammonium actually gets brought into a mitochondria in the hepatocyte. And um, CO2 actually gets brought into a mitochondria as well. And I'll show you why we need CO2 here in a moment. So CO2 comes from bicarbonate. And what will happen is these... Uh, two, the CO2 and the uh, ammonium will actually be acted on by an enzyme known as uh, carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1, so CPS1, to form carbamyl phosphate. So then the carbamyl phosphate will then be added together to the ornithine by an enzyme known as ornithine transcarbamylase, so OTC. So those uh, OTC will actually take ornithine, take carbamyl phosphate and add them together to get citrulline, so another amino acid known as citrulline. Then citrulline will be transported out of the mitochondria and be acted on by arginino-succinate synthetase enzyme. But with this enzyme, uh, this enzyme also needs aspartate as well. And what it'll do is it'll actually uh, produce arginino-succinate. Arginino-succinate will then be acted on by the enzyme arginino-succinase to produce arginine. So you can already see this is how the cycle continues. And in fact, if you look at urea, the two amino groups in urea actually come from one, from the ammonium that you brought into your mitochondria at first, and the other amino group actually comes from aspartate. So those are the two places where the amino uh, groups actually come from. So if you were to count the carbons between arginino-succinate and arginine, you'd notice that there are some carbons missing. And why is that? Well, another product of the arginino-succinase reaction is fumarate. So part of the carbon skeleton of arginino-succinate is actually recycled, and it becomes fumarate. Well, now fumarate, as we all know, is part of the citric acid cycle. So it can be also used for um, citric acid cycle for energy production. Or it can actually be converted to malate, oxaloacetate. So once you have oxaloacetate, oxaloacetate can actually be used for gluconeogenesis or it can be used to produce more aspartate via the enzyme aspartate aminotransferase or AST. Now this enzyme uh, converts oxaloacetate into aspartate by taking an amino group from glutamate and transferring it to the oxaloacetate to make aspartate. So really aspartate is just oxaloacetate plus an amino group. So now as you can see, this cycle can continue if you keep having aspartate. And in fact, you need high amounts of aspartate in order to have the urea cycle operate. So you need high levels of aspartate for that arginino-succinate synthetase reaction. So how much ATP does the urea cycle cost? Well, the first place where we see 
the cycle utilizing ATP is at the carbamol phosphate synthetase reaction. So the uh, CPS1 enzyme actually requires 2-ATP. So, and in fact, because it utilizes 2-ATP, it actually becomes an irreversible reaction. So once the, once the hepatocyte actually produces carbamol phosphate, it, can go, it cannot go back to ammonia and CO2. So it's an irreversible reaction. And the other enzyme that requires energy is the arginino-succinate synthetase reaction, which requires uh, 1 ATP, but in actuality it's equivalent to 2 ATP usage because you're actually converting ATP into AMP. So that's actually an equivalent of 2 ATP. So because CPS1 is an irreversible enzyme, it must be regulated. And in fact, it is. Now, I notice many people don't actually talk about the regulation of CPS1 enzyme, but it is very important to the proper functioning of the urea cycle. So what regulates CPS1? Well, something called N-acetylglutamate actually is an activator of CPS1. So you may be thinking, okay, where is N-acetylglutamate actually coming from? Well, it actually comes from um, acetyl-CoA and glutamate being added together by the enzyme N-acetylglutamate synthase. So what's regulating N-acetylglutamate synthase? Well, arginine, which is the enzyme that we require in the urea cycle, is actually an activator of N-acetylglutamate synthase. So that is one activator of, an, of the N-acetylglutamate synthase enzyme. The other activator of the enzyme is starvation. Now you may be wondering, okay, why is starvation an activator of this enzyme? Well, it makes sense, guys. When you're in starvation, your, your body is starting to utilize more protein as an energy source. And what that means is that your body needs to excrete more nitrogenous waste. So that's exactly what happens. Starvation will actually activate this enzyme, which will lead to N-acetylglutamate, which will then lead to activation of CPS1 and more clearance of nitrogenous waste. So now in summary, what are some of the sources of ammonia? So I, we talk about the body trying to get rid of ammonia or ammonium uh, through the urea cycle, but where is it actually coming from? Well, one source of the ammonia is actually glutaminase reaction. So you're um, taking glutamine and you're um, going through a reaction with the enzyme glutaminase and you're getting ammonia that way. So another reaction is the glutamate dehydrogenase reaction, which takes glutamate and also produces ammonia. Another um, set of enzymes that also produce ammonia are the amino acid or amine oxidases. Um, something else we don't think about too often is the purine and pyrimidine metabolism also produces ammonia. So another source of ammonia that I often see students forgetting about is intestinal bacteria. Now this can become clinically relevant when a person has a perforated bowel and that person will have an increased ammonia load due to intestinal bacterial production of ammonia. So again, just to summarize how much energy the urea cycle utilizes, the urea cycle utilizes an equivalent of 4 ATP for each turn of the urea cycle. So 2 ATP are used at the CPS1 reaction and an equivalent of 2 ATP are used at the argin argininosuccinate synthase reaction. So how important is the urea cycle in nitrogen excretion? Well, first of all, 95% of nitrogen waste is excreted in the urine, and another 5% is excreted in feces. Now, out of all of this, 80 to 90% of nitrogen is lost as urea. So urea is the primary way that the body um, actually excretes nitrogenous waste. So you can see that this cycle and this process is extremely important for proper homeostasis and proper health of an individual. Anyways, guys, that was the lesson on urea cycle. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.